Hey there everybody, Sage here, founder of the School of Evolutionary Herbalism. And lately I've been talking a lot about this concept of vitalism and how vitalism is one of the more traditional models and approaches to not just practicing herbal medicine, but a perception of the way that we see life, of being able to see that the natural world is intelligent, that it has consciousness, that it has purpose and meaning. And I think this is a critically important way of learning to see the world kind of on a big picture level because uh, I think some of the biggest problems we're facing on the earth at this time are because we don't have this vitalist perspective of the natural world. We don't see nature as intelligent and that has led to the human being separating ourselves from the natural world, uh, which I believe is at the root causes of a lot of the major ecological issues that we're facing health issues that we're facing, and it goes on and on and on. But from a more practical perspective in terms of herbalism, it, the vitalist view brings us to a very different approach to looking at the body, a different way of understanding our anatomy, our physiology, and ultimately leading to a very different approach in terms of our therapeutic application of plants. And one of the critical elements of a vitalist worldview is seeing that the body is intelligent as we are as much a part of nature as anything else. And that through following the intelligence of the body that our healing work with the plants is oriented in a way that we're simply supporting the body in doing what it is naturally trying to do on its own, that we're supporting the body's innate internal healing mechanisms rather than allopathically or biochemically suppressing symptoms and things like that. And what, we, what this brings us to, if we were to kind of differentiate more of a, a biomedical view of the body versus a vitalist view of the body, we see a primary division in terms of how we understand the underlying functions of our bodies, right? And on the biochemical, kind of biomedical level, what we see is more of a mechanistic view of the body, right? That the body is likened to a machine, right? And all of our organs and tissues and systems are just like gears that all fit together um, that when they're operating properly, you know, our body is likened to a, a well-oiled machine. And that when something, when that machine isn't functioning properly, i.e. we have a disease or a symptom or something is wrong, then we simply need to fix the broken part in the machine, um, which, you know, ultimately has led us to full-on replacing parts of the body um, through the, the wonders and discoveries of modern science. And, and I don't want you to get me wrong, I believe that modern science and the biomedical model has made some incredible advances in medicine and there's a, a lot of things that they're able to do that are incredible and amazing and save lives, right? But what, what we see is when we have that more mechanistic understanding of the body is that it leads to an herbal approach that really doesn't work that well, right? That if we just try to understand how plants influence the body based on a mechanistic understanding, which typically leads to looking at the, the chemical constituents in the plants, their pharmacological mechanisms of action, their pharmacokinetics, that is how those constituents are used in the body and how they move through the body, um, that can be a very limiting way of understanding how plants heal. And so on the other side, when we look at more of a vitalist understanding of the body, we see that the body is likened to a garden, right? Or to an ecosystem. It's what I like to think of as an ecological model of physiology rather than a mechanistic one. And so what we see in the vitalist traditions of both Western and Eastern, Northern and Southern herbal medicine is that the human being is seen as a microcosmic reflection of the macrocosm, of the universe, of nature. And in that way, we see that 
the human body is just a mirror image of the underlying forces of nature. And this is an incredibly powerful way of seeing the body for we're able to relate the underlying functions and anatomy of our body and relate it to uh, ecosystems, right? So a great example of this is just in the way that we understand um, our organ systems, right? Where we think of you know, our respiratory system, it's like that air element. We're seeing the way we breathe in and breathe out and the way that air element mediates between the external and the internal worlds and, and how that air element that the lungs and the respiratory system, when they become imbalanced, um, they take on a very particular type of ecosystem, right? So, you know, from a mechanistic perspective, if someone has, say, a respiratory tract infection, well, they're going to say, well, you have this, you know, this pathogen, this virus, or this bacteria that's causing this infection, and we need to kill, we need to kill the pathogen, and then you'll be better, right? And while that's one certain element of it, if we approach our herbal therapeutics from that perspective, then we're just going to be looking at herbal antivirals, herbal antibiotics, and just try to kill the bug. But from an ecological perspective, from a vitalist perspective, we want to say, you know, well, what was the state of the tissues that made it made them hospitable to that pathogen, right? So rather than just killing the pathogen, we're actually shifting our orientation to see what, what was it in the body that made it even possible for that pathogen to, um, to perpetuate itself within the body. And so if we were to think of, and a lot of people have, have seen this or experienced this themselves, especially with coughs, I find the respiratory system is a really great example to illustrate this concept of ecological physiology because we all know the difference between the really wet, gurgly, damp, swampy, boggy kind of cough where you know you hear someone cough and you could just hear all the phlegm and all the mucus and all the dampness and moisture that's in there versus a cough that's really wheezy and dry and spasmodic and tense and sensitive and irritable. Well, we can think of that in terms of, you know, like a hot, dry, tense cough versus a cold and damp cough. And now this is kind of using more traditional terminology that we get from humoral systems of medicine, uh, Greek medicine, Arabic medicine, even Ayurvedic and Chinese medicine uh, observes these energetic qualities of hot and cold and damp and dry and tense and relaxed. But we can kind of step back and look at it from this bigger perspective and see that actually as an ecosystem. And this is the way I tend to see into people's bodies is, oh, is their body like a hot, dry desert? Or is it like a cold, damp, swampy bog, right? And when we're able to see the ecosystem of the body, all of a sudden it, it enables you to transfer from plant to person much more readily. So we can see this, these ecological properties in the plants as well, right? A great example of this is with an herb like Angelica. We've actually got a whole bunch of Angelica that we're growing right now, so this plant's kind of been on my mind lately, but Angelica really likes to grow in a very cold and a very damp type environment. Yet, it, the energetics of Angelica is very warming, very stimulating to circulation, to menses, right, to the liver, to digestion. It's a very stimulating kind of plant, very warming and also very drying. And so we see that Angelica grows in the ty same type of ecosystem in nature that it treats within the body. And so you can start to see this kind of this kind of like fractal pattern, this mirror image in terms of where a remedy grows and then how that remedy is going to treat the specific ecological state of the body. And this is ultimately 
what we're referring to, what I'm talking about here is essentially a tissue state model of the body that we can have a symptom but underneath that symptom, there might be different underlying causes of that symptom based on the ecological state of the body. You know, another example I like to use with this is constipation, right? Um, you know, from a me mechanistic model, we say, oh, someone's constipated, they're not having bowel movements. Well, we need to give them like a stimulant laxative in order to <clears throat> stimulate the bowel to have the bowel movement. But people might be constipated for different reasons, right? Maybe the mucosal membrane is all dried out and isn't well lubricated. That can lead to constipation. Maybe on the opposite end of that, maybe there's a bunch of damp accumulation and stagnation and everything's just sitting there because it's all damp and stagnant. Well, that's a very different ecological state of the intestinal tract that can lead to the same symptom as constipation, but you're gonna treat it very, very differently. Someone might have constipation because they're really nervous and really tense and everything's kind of constricted like, like there's a kink in the garden hose, so to speak, right? Well, they might be constipated, but again, you're gonna treat that very differently than you would someone that has a dry intestine versus a very damp intestine. Someone might have constipation because they're too cold, right? They have this low digestive fire and they're not able to break down their foods in a proper way Maybe everything is, isn't secreting enough digestive enzymes or bile. There's kind of this depression within the organ systems that's preventing them from um, actively breaking the, the food down, right? So that can lead to depression. So you're gonna, tr to constipation. So you're gonna treat these tissue states, these different ecological patterns very, very differently, right? Someone with the dry bowel is gonna respond very well to something like marshmallow root or aloe vera, very soothing, moistening type remedies. Whereas someone with dampness is gonna respond very well to bitters. Whereas someone with tension is gonna respond very well to antispasmodics. Whereas someone with coldness is gonna respond very well to warming carminative type remedies, right? So. I speak to this because this is a really critical element of holistic herbal medicine, that herbal medicine has been practiced successfully all across the world for thousands of years before we had more of this mechanistic biochemical model of understanding the body. And I don't think these models are necessarily in conflict with one another. I think it's when we only orient on one side of the equation too strongly and we reject the other, that all of a sudden we become limited. So even the vitalist herbalist can still take into consideration what a biomedical model has to offer, that we can understand the causes of certain diseases and symptoms from the scientific understanding. And same as the way a biomedical model can really learn a lot from this more vitalist ecological model of the body. So I don't really see them as um, conflicting. I really see them as working together to create ultimately a more holistic understanding of how our bodies function. So I just wanted to share that with you today because to me this, vi this is a, a critical element of vitalist herbalism, of having this ecosystem um, understanding of how our organs and our systems and our tissues function so that we can understand the relationship between us as human microcosms of the greater pattern and forces of nature in the macrocosm. So I'd love to hear what you think about this concept of ecological physiology. I'd love to hear about it. Scroll down, post me a comment, post me a question in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you feel like this lesson here would serve someone you know well, hit one of the share buttons, hit the like button. We always love to see people liking the content here. and. Um, and I hope you uh, are enjoying all the content we're sharing on the Evolutionary Herbalism blog here. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in today. And uh, until next time, take care and be well.